What's the wisest thing you've ever done? And sometimes it's really simple, like looking both ways before you cross the street. Sometimes it's more complex, requiring lots of thought, lots of preparation, and could have implications for the rest of your life. I've made lots of wise decisions in my life. I've also made some foolish ones. One of the more foolish decisions I've made has left me with a scar on my right hand. Uh, when I was younger, and before I became a Christian, I used to drink a lot. One night I was at the club with my brother, and we were doing How Tough Are You type games. I was really drunk, and so I let my brother hold a cigarette close to my hand to show how tough I was, that I wasn't giving in to the pain. The reality is, I was so drunk I couldn't feel it. And so after a while, Paul pulled the cigarette away from my hand to see this massive blister uh, and this scar, which I have now. That was fairly unwise. Yeah. Let me give you another example. Now this sounds foolish, but it turns out to be quite wise. Some men gather up their riches and they travel. They travel for weeks, uh, maybe months, perhaps even years, to go and visit a child. Upon arriving there, they give their riches to the child and they worship. And then they go home. Now, if you've been around and you've heard the Christmas story a few times, we're used to the idea of wise men visiting Jesus. But when you nut it out, it sounds really strange. Why on earth would they do this? It's so common, we've even got songs about it. You know the poorly titled song, We Three Kings? Poorly titled because they weren't kings, and we don't know if there were three, or if there were more or less. But what would possess these wise men, these magi, as it occurs in the text, to go and visit a child born in the backwaters of the universe? He was not someone who was well known. No one knew his parents. He wasn't from the current royal family. But something about this child was so special that they had to visit. Something was so important, so vital, that they risked their lives to go and offer him the gifts, the traditional gifts of kingship. It was something in the stars. Somehow, God revealed to these uh, magi something very different to what everyone else saw. They were probably astrologers from <coughs> Babylon, that's the best guess we can make. Uh, no, I don't know what their names are, although some people think they do. Uh, and it's something like the Magi in um, Daniel. If you read the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, you hear about uh, these wise men who come and can't answer dreams and stuff. Uh, possibly people like them who were watching the sky and they saw Jesus' star rise. And in seeing the star, they understood that something big was happening. They understood the this, this situation. They read the signs. And God gave them the knowledge that a king was born in Judah. And not just any king. See, in those days, when a, a child was born, a new king was born in another nation, they didn't do the same things we do today. These days, if the ruling leader of a nation... Uh, was to have a baby, the other neighbouring nations would send them a present, send them a gift. In you know, the first century, what you would generally do is try to assassinate the baby because you don't want a stable leadership line going on. You want to destabilise the situation, uh, possibly so that you could take over the country in 10 years' time, or at the very least so that they won't try to take over you. In fact, the presence of these gifts from these wise men from the East indicates that they recognised the right of this baby to rule over them. Now you see, you don't give gifts to foreign nations. You give gifts to the rulers of your nation. But let's look at what they did. <clears throat> Where did they turn up? Uh, look with me on page 783, verse 1. Wise men came to Jerusalem. Okay? Now, we know the story, or most of us will know the story, and so we skip over the details. 
The first to hear about these guys is when they arrive in Jerusalem, people from the east, after we've been told that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. After the birth of Jesus, they arrive. And verse, the question that they ask the king and the uh, people disturbs them greatly. Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? Now, Herod was probably upset, presumably because he didn't have a newborn son, and was saying, who's this new king of the Jews? Uh, that's generally something that would upset a king. But all of Jerusalem was disturbed. All of Jerusalem was upset. And they said, we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage to him. Uh, other translations like the NIV say we have come to worship him. Now who can tell me the problem in those first couple of verses? There's, there's something that's glaring there. Why did they go to Jerusalem? They saw a star and they didn't go to the right place. See, they saw the, the star and they read the signs and then they took a shortcut. They saw the signs and interpreted them correctly and then jumped to the wrong conclusion. The star is the star which told them that a king was born, a king of the Jews, and then they didn't follow the star, they went king of the Jews, let's go to Jerusalem, that's where it is. And then because they didn't follow the star, they didn't end up where Jesus was. They went to the palace in Jerusalem. Was Jesus there? No. And Herod didn't know where he was, but Herod knew how to find out. Herod sent for the chief priests and the scribes who knew the scriptures and asked them where the Messiah would be born. And so they quote Micah chapter 5, uh, which says that it's going to be Bethlehem. And so he sends for the wise men and says, guys, listen, you know, it's caught me by surprise. But on the way back, tell me all the details of where the child is, because I want to worship him too. And, and when did you see this star? That's, that's important for me to know too. The wise men then head for Bethlehem. On the way they see the star, they follow it to where Jesus is, they hand out the gifts and then they head home. There's a couple of things that stand out from there. Firstly, the wise men were watching for Jesus, but didn't know where to find him. Herod, or at least the religious leaders, knew exactly where to find him, but they weren't watching for him. Uh, did you notice that? As soon as Herod says, where's the Messiah going to be born? They go, oh, Bethlehem, everyone knows that. But there were no priests in Bethlehem waiting for Jesus. There were no religious leaders saying, we're waiting for the birth of the Messiah. Here he is. And we know from Luke that shepherds were the ones who welcomed him. Even Herod knew that the Messiah was coming. And so he says, where is he going to be born? And he knew who to ask to find out. But was Herod watching? No. In fact, the arrival of this baby threatened him so much, it disturbed all of Jerusalem. And we know, we'll get to this next week, we know that it disturbed him so much that he orders the massacre of all the children in Bethlehem, just to make sure that Jesus doesn't make it. Now it takes a Gentile turning up. It takes a Gentile turning up to say, where is your king? Now let's look at the Magi. These wise men had their eyes fixed on heaven and they saw when the star rose. They interpreted it correctly. But then they brought their eyes from heaven down to earth. And they went the wrong way. They went to the logical place, the humanly obvious place. They went to the palace to find the king of the Jews. 